Next up on ATVN Sports Extra, USC put up a fight against the top team in the country, but will the sixth best team in the conference be a trap game for the hot and cold Trojans? Plus, the soccer team wraps up its regular season schedule this weekend. Can the seniors repeat the magic of their first season at SC? And hey, there's more to life than football. Water polo, we've got it. Golf, no problem. Sports Extra, now. Welcome to ATVN Sports Extra. I'm your host, Alex Wilk. They say there's no place like home, but the Trojans have a better record on the road than at the Coliseum. Granted, that may have more to do with who they play than where, but still, hosting the 4-4 four and four Sun Devils could be a lot more devilish than it seems at first glance. USC hasn't lost to ASU since 1999, but last year's contest was the closest of the decade. The Trojans eked out a 14-9 victory in Tempe a year ago, but don't expect it to be such a low-scoring affair this time around. Sun Devils quarterback Stephen Threat is one of just 20 QBs in the nation with more passing yards than Matt Barkley. Devils put up 42 points last week against Washington State. We caught up with the team to see how the Trojans plan to cool off the Sun Devils. Uh, you just got to be ready to, you know, stop them on third down because that means, you know, they can move the ball, move the ball up and down the field because they're throwing the rock a lot. So uh, we got to be ready for that. The theme of, of being a secondary is you, you're the last line of defense. You can't let anybody get on top of you. So as long as we, you know, we keep that, we keep our vertical leverage, and, and we don't let anybody, you know, get on top of us and give up the big play, I think we'll be all right. As for USC's offense, it's seen better days. Coach Giffen called the team's offense, quote, terrible following the loss to Oregon as the team failed to execute on third down. Matt Barkley took the comment in stride. Well, we know we could have done better, and we know we could have scored more points, and we, we missed some opportunities, and we have very high expectations because we're capable of scoring a lot of points. And so, yeah, 32 points was a lot, but it, it wasn't enough to win the game. On defense, you just never know what you're going to get out of the Trojans. We saw how impressive they can be against Cal, but when they're bad, man, are they bad. Since starting Pac-10 play, USC has only won when it holds its opponent to 16 points or less. That accounts for the Trojans' 2-3 and three record in the conference. To beat ASU and gain sole possession of fifth place in the conference, Coach Kiffin is tinkering with his starting lineup. Both safety Jawanza Starling and linebacker Devon Kennard could lose their starting posts this week. Coach has said that uh, they're going to give other players some chances and stuff like that. And, um, you know, we don't, can't really read in too much to that as a player. You just got to, you know, every time, every opportunity you get, you just got to get out there and do the best you can. Here to tell us what all of this means for USC is Neon Tommy, Associate Sports Editor, Shotgun Spratling. Shotgun, thanks for joining us. Thanks for having me on. USC's defense struggled against Oregon, as you might expect, uh, but Arizona State has a uh, really strong passing attack as well. Do you think that's going to happen again this week? It's going to be very difficult for USC. You know, they are going to have to go in and, and make some plays. There's something, they made a couple of turnovers, and that's when the, the momentum swayed in the, the Oregon game is when they were able to cause a turnover uh, with Jarrell Casey with the interception. So they're going to have to do that against Stephen Three, and he's thrown, I believe, 13 interceptions this season, so it can happen. USC has uh, been criticized for their offense last week. They really didn't perform the way a lot of people were expecting them to. Uh, what do you think the issue was there? Was it the offensive line, or were people just not making plays? Well, the offensive line was, as Lane Kiffin said, the, the worst they've been this season. But also, you have to give credit to Oregon's defense. Nobody expected Oregon's defense to be as fast and as quick as they were, and they really made some plays out there. People have been talking about Matt Barkley as a potential Heisman candidate, not for this year, but the following year. Uh, he didn't really have a Heisman-like performance against Oregon. He has in the past of the, the season. What do you think his chances are next year? Well, coming into this game, people were talking, into the Oregon game, people were talking about how Barkley could be a Heisman candidate this year. He needs that signature win. Maybe that was the win. Uh, against Oregon if they could have pulled that one off. But, you know, he's definitely going to be a candidate next year. He's got all the tools. He is not throwing the interceptions that he did last year. So coming into next year with, with some more weapons around him, he's going to be just deadly. Right now he has to deal with the weapons that he does have. Uh, what do you think the uh, – give us a prediction for Arizona State. Well, it's going to be it's going to be a really close battle, I think. Uh, more than people are thinking, you know, USC hasn't lost Arizona since 1999. But this is a different Arizona State team. Uh, the Sun Devils coming out with Dennis Erickson's passing attack and Stephen Threat's a quarterback that can throw it around. Last year they didn't have a quarterback to do that. And then on defense, you got Vontez Burfick, who is known to hit some people, was, was committed to come here, decommitted because he didn't think that it was a good fit academically. So he went to Arizona State where pretty much anybody can get in as long as they have a pulse. And 
he has excelled there, and he is he's one of the best linebackers in the nation. The the NFL scouts are already salivating all all over him. So they got to watch out and make some play, stay out of his way and try to block him. And if they can do that, then I think USC can pull off this one. Neon Tommy, Associate Sports Editor, uh, Shotgun Spratling. Shotgun, thanks for joining us. Thank you. Now, some of you may remember Arizona State linebacker Vontaze Perfect, as he just mentioned. He committed to the Trojans as a junior in high school, then switched to ASU before enrolling at USC. Perfect had his reasons for the switch, but losing major recruits is nothing new for USC, and it's not just the sanctions. Schools like Oregon have built palaces to house their athletic departments. Meanwhile, USC has made do with the understated, surprisingly small, Heritage Hall. That's about to change. A new $70 million building is coming within the next two years. Coach Kiffin says it'll be a major boost for USC's recruiting. Very exciting, um, especially in times like this, you know, when people, I think, would, would be thinking maybe SC's on the way down or something for a statement like this about SC and the power of SC to really take the only thing we've ever dealt with negative in recruiting, which was our facilities, and now to put us up there with the top in the country. The coach says he regrets losing out on Perfect. He's been dominant for ASU's defense. If you don't know him yet, you definitely will after this weekend. The Galen Center hosts the men's basketball team tomorrow for an exhibition match against Point Loma Nazarene. The team will get its first look at the new starting lineup at 2 p.m. UC Irvine visits Galen Center a week later as the Trojans start their 2010-2011 season. Over the pitch now where the soccer team is also gearing up for a crucial weekend road trip of their own. The women of Troy take on Arizona State and Arizona in the final regular season matches of the year. This class of seniors is the last remaining group from the team's national championship in 2007. They're looking to finish their USC careers in the same way they started them as national champs. I mean, our team goal is definitely national championship. We want to get there. We want to be in the final four. And especially finishing that, coming in with a freshman year doing that, and then hopefully ending with a senior year having that, it would be such a great opportunity to end on. We know that it starts on the next this weekend against Arizona because in order to get a good seed, hopefully we have to come out with two wins down there. The 17th ranked Trojans will learn their NCAA playoff destiny when the playoff bracket is announced on Monday. And if that's not enough excitement for you, how about we talk a little USC-UCLA? The rivalry hits the pool tomorrow afternoon. No love lost between these schools, as you know, but uh, this game has a little extra on the line. USC is ranked second in the nation, followed closely behind by UCLA at number three. ATVN's Trevor Thompson went poolside to see how the team is preparing for this week's monster game. The Trojans have already beaten the Bruins two times on the season, but each victory came by a mere single goal. And as the old sports adage goes, it's pretty tough to beat a team three times in a row. But at least the Trojans know what they have to work on specifically this weekend to pull off the hat trick. Our defense, for sure. Uh, we've, we've been giving up a little too many goals than in the past years. Uh, our defense always needs to improve, and that's something that Jovan's been harping, harping to us like all week. You know, there's a lot of, lot of things that have happened uh, between our last game against them and now, and, you know, we think we've come up with a pretty good game plan. So we're just about implementing it and, and uh, executing. Now, the Trojans might have to conserve a little bit of energy against the Bruins this weekend because after that matchup, they play the second half of a doubleheader against the team with one of the most frightening nicknames in all of college sports, the Whittier Poets. Trevor Thompson, ATVN Sports Extra. Now, over to the golf course, the women's side is in Palo Alto today for its final tournament of the fall. The third-ranked women of Troy joined six other top ten teams at the Pac-10 SEC Challenge this weekend. ATVN's Jonathan Kendrick has more. The USC men's golf team is coming off back-to-back -back top five finishes, and they'll look to keep that momentum going at the Court of Val Collegiate. We talked with freshman Jeffrey Kang about how the team is preparing for this upcoming event. You try to always be confident. I think, um, I think a lot of the guys are feeling a lot better about themselves right now. Um, Pretty good tournaments. Last tournament, TJ played pretty well. Steve played pretty well. Um, all of us had like one good day and stuff. So um, every tournament, we're always trying to win. This week's tournament starts on Monday and runs through Wednesday and is USC's last event of the fall. The Trojans won this tournament back in 2008. Jonathan Kendrick, ATVN Sports Extra. Now, time for this week's special commentary. Think about what it means to be a USC student or a Trojan football fan in general. There's so much history that comes with that label. Maybe the most iconic, tangible part of USC's tradition is none other than the L.A. Coliseum. The Coliseum has hosted Trojan football since 1923, and I'll be honest, it's starting to show. I traveled to Minnesota for the football game earlier this year, and it was hard not to be a little jealous. 
The brand new TCF Bank Stadium in Minneapolis has every amenity you could ask for in a football stadium. A huge video board, state-of-the-art media facilities, private box seats. The Coliseum has tons of history, but as a modern football facility for one of the best teams in the country, it's time for an upgrade. The Coliseum is in desperate need of a renovation. I'm not saying tear it down and start over. I'm not saying stick some weirdly modern box on top of the existing structure as they did with Chicago's Soldier Field. What I am saying is the Coliseum will not last as is for another 90 years. In order to keep fans and recruits coming to the Coliseum, the stadium needs a facelift. I know the school just committed $70 million to a different athletic facility, but if I were USC and the Independent Coliseum Commission, a major renovation would be my next priority. I'm not talking nip and tuck. I'm talking full-on reconstructive surgery. Right now, the team could use a lift. That's it for me. Join us every Friday at noon only on ATVN.org.